landing smack right on my tailbone. And I remember just, just lying there with my tailbone making, just being like, there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem was not that God wasn't present, but I couldn't see him because I was doing what we often do as human beings, and that's I was looking at myself as the center of the universe, or I was looking at the universe with me at the center. And as long as we try to make sense out of the universe, doing that, we won't be able to. It's like when Galileo came along and said, you know, the, the stars and the, the models, they're not behaving like they're supposed to, but the reason is because our model is wrong, because we have the Earth at the center, when in fact, it's the sun that is at the center of the universe. And that's the way it is with us. As long as we keep ourselves on the center, because we're not the center, everything uh, gets messed up and doesn't make sense. The Earth isn't the center. We aren't the center. The sun is the center. So for us, uh, OK, a little while later in, in Vegas with, with this experience, it was kind of funny. I had a, a, a small observation of, of Jonah. We, we asked him to go uh, down, down this big flight of stairs and, and across the parking lot to grab something from the uh, from the van. And it's, you know, 100 degrees or, or whatever it is. And he's, oh, do I have to do that? So, but he goes goes uh, goes along, but because he doesn't listen very well, when he came back, he didn't bring the thing that he was supposed to bring. So we're like, no, you, you, you have to go back. And he's like, are you serious? It's not, it's not fair. And, and just this, this sense of despair, Jamie's waiting for him, probably starting a video in the room without him, and, and, and he has to go down these stairs and across that parking lot, and there was us as the parents being like, oh, little one, this this too will pass. <laughs> and, and it was nothing for us because we had some sense of perspective, and we knew that in, in the greater scheme of things, his experience of frustration and despair was nothing, and of course that got me to wondering if my problems and all the things that I like to whine about and my frustrations and angst and everything else aren't something totally and completely different in God's perspective. When I want to, to, to smash my computer because the universe is unfair, maybe he's just kind of shaking his head saying, oh, oh, little one, <laughs> this too will pass. Don't you see that I have you in the grip of my eternity in a bigger Amen. picture? that I have you and everyone in the grip of my love, and your momentary struggles, as hard as they may seem to you, are inside of my grace, and I've got you there. And it makes me think of this uh, quote I want to share with you from uh, Julian of Norwich. Julian of Norwich had, had a vision of Christ. And in her vision, vision, she was consumed by love, for Jesus, the one in whom and through whom that she was created. And she realized this relationship is what I'm created for. I'm created to love and be in relationship with Christ. And she reflected on what then ever distracted her from that. If that was what she was all about, if that was what life was about, why was she ever distracted? And she reflected that what stood in the way was sin. And by sin, not just meaning the, the bad stuff she did, sin meaning basically everything that is not good. Everything in heaven and earth that's not right, that's not as it ought to be, whether intentional or otherwise. And she asked, why must it be this way? Why can't it be otherwise? And Jesus answered. She said she heard Jesus' voice answer her, and it's a famous quote. Uh, she felt him speak to her. It's behooven that there is sin, but all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. Paul wrote uh, the Apostle Paul, we looked at it a while back in uh, 2 Corinthians wrote, uh, and I'm going to read uh, a, a more from this passage in a little bit. Our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And coming from Paul, that's kind of a, a big deal, because the, the light and momentary troubles that, that the Apostle Paul dealt with were light and momentary troubles like being stoned or, or thrown in jail and eventually executed uh, for his faith. So still, for him, they're light and momentary compared to the big picture. All right, so, so the story that I want to share with you this morning that I've had in my head this week uh, comes from 2 Kings chapter 6. And this is way back Old Testament 
way back in the time when Israel had kings uh, before the exile, and the kings rule God's people, and, and kind of importantly, God raises up these prophets who speaks God's words to the people, but also speaks God's words to the kings who are supposed to rule God's people. And the main prophet at this time, in 2 Kings 6, is uh, uh, the prophet Elisha. He was the successor to Elijah. Okay, so anyway, Israel's Israel. And uh, there's this neighboring king, the king of Aram, who's at war with Israel. But the war is not going very well because the problem is for him that he keeps making all these secret plans, like where to camp, but the prophet keeps telling the king of Israel where the Arameans are, are camped. And so his plans are foiled again and again. So the king of, of Aram doesn't like this one bit, and he's enraged, and he thinks that one of his officers must be betraying them. Uh, uh oh. I mixed up my, uh, my, my pages, and this is 